Greetings metalheads and welcome to No Nonsense Metal Reviews. I'm George and today I'm back with another underrated album review for you. Another album that, although I might thoroughly enjoy it myself, I just don't feel that it gets the appreciation and the attention and the love from the metal world that actually it deserves. So, today's underrated album comes from an all-time favourite heavy metal band for me, a band that I absolutely adore. They were instrumental in basically introducing introducing myself to a lot of more traditional heavy metal, just some killer albums, some killer music uh, in their catalogue, and a band that really were a catalyst for me getting so much deeper into the metal world. A band that are also held in very high regards by a lot of metalheads and a lot of bands as well. Quite famously, they were very instrumental in inspiring bands such as uh, Thra um, Thrash Metal Legends, Metallica and Megadeth and inspiring the movement that we had coming out of Germany with bands like Creator and so on and so forth. But they're just all round legends and huge inspirations world over. The mighty merciful fate, Denmark's finest metal export, absolute legends, and the album that I just feel gets totally overlooked is the last album that they've actually released, the last full length album I should say, Nine, which was released in 1999. This was the final studio album before a bit of a turbulent period that saw a very long Hiatus, obviously King Diamond, the absolute powerhouse monument frontman legend in his own right, who has had and continues to have a, uh, a very, very successful, very illustrious solo career. But before that, Merciful Fate, the band with King Diamond on vocals, was incredibly busy, actually. And it was only really when I was doing a little bit of research prior to doing this uh, underrated album review that I realised just how prolific and rapid um, pace of work Merciful Fate had, how prolific they were. They, they were churning out albums every other year or year. For example, prior to number nine, we had Dead Again, which was released in 1998. Another odd album, and I will say, I do think it's an odd album. Both personal favourites. I absolutely love both of these albums. I will say that I, I love all the Merciful Fate albums in their own way. I think that some of them are obviously a little bit more well-known, a little bit more around than others. But you had two quite odd albums back to back. This one, Dead Again, I was quite tempted initially uh, to say that this was the clear underrated album in their catalogue but actually I don't know I think it gets a little bit more love than nine personally from just things I've read and, and seen online heard in reviews and so on and so forth and this is a, a massive concept album over two sides or two discs I should say Four sides of vinyl is a huge double album, um, over an hour long, massive piece. But this one, number nine, the final album, is a very odd one. It's around 40 minutes long. It's a heavy album, and it's a real, it's a real curveball. I feel that this album is a great album, but it is really noticeably very different from the albums that came before. Certainly uh, very different from Dead Again, very different from Into the Unknown, very different from Time, if we keep going back, but nonetheless, I think this is a brilliant album. So much so that I also recently picked up this ditty. This is the vinyl, standard vinyl format of Nine. I, I absolutely love that artwork. That artwork with Merciful Fate's very interesting spiky looking logo here, that absolutely looks the freaking part. That looks, that screams metal. And that is exactly what you get. You get 40 minutes of heavy freaking metal 
excellent musicianship across the board. King Diamond's vocals, they never disappoint. Some albums, we know he sounds so high-pitched it shatters your windows and eardrums. Other times, where he's doing more of a conventional singing, he still sounds brilliant. He's still an amazing frontman and a vocalist. Metal Blade Records um, reissue, I believe this was 20... Well, this one was actually from 2016, this particular reissue. There's, there's loads of different reissue series that you can get um, are available for Merciful Fate's catalogue, <clears throat> as there is with King Diamond's albums, solo albums as well. Just so this very nice black vinyl. Just a nice standard black vinyl, but it's heavy duty. Very heavy duty stuff indeed. And it's a lovely piece. Absolutely stunning album. Um, I, I find myself more and more over time just leaning more towards a traditional nice black vinyl. And I think just the amount of colour vinyl that you can get these days has kind of put me off. But hey-ho, I still do love a nice colour vinyl. Nice insert with this one. The whole thing's heavy duty. So this is a good illustration here. You've got the king at the top. Absolute legend. We've got Charlie D'Angelo on bass. We've got the legendary shredder Hank Sherman. Fantastic guitarist he is on guitar. Uh, then we've got Bjarni T. Holm on drums and Mike Ward on guitar as well. Absolute brilliant musicians. Can't fault the musicianship one little bit here. I think Hank is an absolute legend of a shredder. Um, and in this format, we also get, I will show off, is this lovely giant poster. If I can open it up without ripping it. So we get the artwork there. I'd love to have this up. I really would. And my nice logo on the reverse there. So anyway, that's just a closer inspection of this lovely 2016 um, vinyl package. I know that you can get a more recent reissue than that. And I think it's on sort of like an orange, fiery looking splattery vinyl, which is very nice indeed. Try and fold this up without damaging it. There we go. An excellent album. In my opinion, this is a this is a truly underrated album. I think that the issue is another fundamental issue is that this album was following on a, a rapid rate of releases, but also some incredible releases. If we go back to the debut, Melissa, then we've got Don't Break the Oath, arguably the two best albums in their catalogue. I I'm gonna say just off the top of my head, uh, without overthinking it, I'd say those are probably my two favourites, but then again, you've got a continuation of brilliance. You've got the amazing um, In the Shadows. You've got the rather fantastic Time. I think that's a, uh, a monumental album. Could be one of their high, high points in their career. And so on. But this one is an underrated classic. We kick off with Last Rites, which is... Probably one of the heaviest tracks on the album. It's an absolute belter. Might be a little bit clearer on there. They probably suffer with the glare, but last right, absolute belter, full throttle, heavy freaking speed metal assault. Really decent. Obviously, it's King Diamond, it's Merciful Fate. You've got a very theatric nature to it. The King's vocals are clear as a bell. That guy is, is such an anomaly, absolutely fantastic. But it's a real charging heavy metal number. It really does bring to mind sort of painkiller era Judas Priest. Then you've got um, Church of St. Anne, which is one of my favorite tracks on the album. Again, it's a bit of an odd one, but it's, uh, it's a great one. Big chorus, very memorable. The, throughout the whole album, all these tracks are very, very memorable. Um, just quite unnerving. I think that's part of the the sort of aesthetics, if you like. It's a it's a creepy freaking album. But then, do we expect anything less from the King and Co? Probably not. Uh, the Church of Saint Anne is a brilliant one. Very catchy, heavy freaking metal. It does, in my opinion, have a little bit of a almost a Sabbath kind of doomy vibe to it, um, coupled with a little bit of a I don't know sludgy tone it's a strange one but it's freaking heavy doomy doomy stuff 
Sold My Soul, Creepy, Heavy, Metal, Charging, House on the Hill. That's kind of a little bit more, more akin to the sort of stuff that we were getting with Dead Again, um, which is also a very creepy freaking album. Burning Hell is a heavy point. We get, again, we're getting these very sort of speed metal, faster paced tracks where it's just pummeling riffs chugging away and then we get that battering of the drums as well absolutely brilliant the grave a very strong track indeed another sort of highlight there insane is weird um it's a very weird number but again it's got that kind of chaotic fast-paced nature kiss the demon <laughs> is a slower paced song very sinister very creepy but you've got this sort of big chorus as well. That track in particular, that could easily have come from a King Diamond album as opposed to a Merciful Fate album. Buried Alive. Ah, oh, brilliant. That's freaking freaking heavy. Again, it's got a classic sort of Merciful Fate sound to it. You know, stretching back to time and, and before. And then we close with the title track, Nine which is ironically number 10 on the album. But Nine is a bit of an odd one. It's an odd track, I think, for a, well, a very odd track on a very unusual album. And again, it's got that kind of very sinister nature, but it is heavy. It's got a bit of a sort of a theatric nature. Um, again, it's kind of doomy at times. It's just weird, but it's a good, good track overall it's 40 minutes of merciful fate i know i've said it's a bit of an odd album and that there's some tracks that do have a little bit of a different different vibe to them different sound it's still clearly the work of king diamond and co it's definitely merciful fate um, but i do think that there's quite a few tracks here that could easily have come from a king diamond album um, certain moments remind me of some of the classic uh, King Diamond material that we get from an album like The Eye. Maybe without the vocal high notes. Because consistently throughout this album, the King is not as high in nature. It's more the high notes are in the background, kind of reinforcing and providing backing vocals. Like, But I would say that this album has some clear highlights. There's no weak tracks on it. Even the, the sort of the odd interim tracks uh, between clear standouts they're still good they're still solid merciful fate tracks the real highlights though definitely include last rites absolutely bruising opening track there then we've got the brilliant church of saint anne as i say that's a personal highlight for me i think house on the hill is a brilliant one as is the the much more sort of conventional merciful fate track burn in hell but right the way through there's there's not a there's not a weak track on the album so i'd say this is an underrated classic but i'd be very interested to hear thoughts and opinions of other metalheads and merciful fate fans alike if you've never heard nine maybe you've only heard the classics maybe you've only heard don't break the oath and maybe you've only heard time if you've never heard the brilliant nine i would absolutely implore you to go and check this out because it's a strong album, just a little bit different, shall we say. But that's no bad thing. So, check it out and let me know what your thoughts are on this one. Are you a Merciful Fate fan? What are your thoughts and opinions on The Great Nine? What are your thoughts and opinions on The Great Merciful Fate? Let me hear you. Thank you very much for watching, my friends. Really do appreciate the, uh, the view. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, support. Whatever you like, very much appreciate as always. And do check back soon for more reviews and recommendations of all the good heavy things. Take care of yourselves, my friends, and until next time, stay heavy.